the Roma Resistance Day and the unknown history of the Roma uh, movement, presented by Vicente Rodriguez Fernandez from Spain. Hello, everybody. Okay. Um, I wanted to share briefly about um, our history, especially the history that we don't talk about. When people talk about Romani movement, people think of 1971. They think about the Romani flag. They think about the anthem. They, they think about 8th of April. But many people in, at many times in history, particularly the early 20th century, did already indeed establish Romani holidays, Romani people as a nation, Romani flags, Romani symbols. And these people had uh, not just an incredible degree of success, but a supreme dignity, power, and intelligence. Now, we tend constantly to think that our generation or the previous generations are the only people that has been active in the fields of Romani rights, and it's simply not true, and it's one of the biggest defects in the Romani movement, our disconnection with our history. Um, this symbol over here, this is a very small presentation. This symbol over here is St. George killing the dragon. I call the presentation, uh, resist, remember, and slay the dragon. You know, the dragon meaning racism, discrimination, prejudice, you know, I use it as a metaphor. Where do I need to point the, okay, sorry. Um, this was the symbol of one of the earliest, if not the earlier, registered Roma organization that was in Bulgaria in 1908, 1910. We know very little about the people who created the organization. We know very little about how the organization looked like or how long it was working. But it's just a tiny bit, you know, I'm, I'm showing you a tiny bit of a history about ourselves that we don't know and it's fundamental to understand. Uh, more than a hundred years ago, there were Romani people gathering and organizing themselves in a time of extreme and incredible political turbulence. You know, this was a time where Christian people rebelled in the Ottoman Empire, Romani people found themselves in the middle, and they tried to organize to grant their survival, and not just their survival, but their establishment as a nation. If you look to some of the earlier Romani activists, particularly in what was Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, Romania, we're talking about 1910, 1920s, 1930s, you see a power and you see some personalities that I have never seen in my life. I've never seen in my life. Our standard for what it is Roma activism has incredibly decreased in the last 100 years. 100 years ago, we had people talking nation to nation and today, many times, we are begging for attention with a mentality that can be classified just as um, incredibly oppressed or colonized, if you prefer. So I think this is an important reflection to have when we talk about what is the future of the Romani movement and what are the cornerstones of our history. Again, this is a picture I'll explain uh, later. This is one of the earlier Romani organizations. This is in the 1940s in Bulgaria. The man in the center is Sakir Pasov. I will talk briefly about him. Again, an idea that is everywhere is the idea of nation, is the idea of power, is the idea of, establi of establishing an equal to equal dialogue with the authorities. This man over, this man over here is Sakir Pasov. Now, can you raise the hands? How many of you have you heard about this man before? Or know about this man before? Please. One hand, rise, maybe two, maybe three. How is that possible? How is that possible? How is possible that people that did so much more than what we did died almost in complete anonymity. How is that possible? I mean, this person over here did things that are so incredible that we cannot even imagine. And like him, hundreds. 
We're talking about early 20th century. We talk about some accounts, 19th century. We talk about Roma organizing in, in working groups, in syndicates, in musical associations, in regional associations, in national associations. This person over here, Sakir Pasov, wanted to establish a trans-Bulgarian and then a worldwide Romani association very early. Yet we don't know these people. We think the Romani movement is from the 70s, and it's from the 60s, and from the 80s, and from the 90s. And every generation thinks they are inventing the wheel. And funny enough, we are arriving to almost the same conclusions and repeating the same protocols and the same suggestions that other people did before without learning much in the process, which is so, so important. He was born on 1898. He fought in the First World War, and he created first the association Istakbal Future. He was a community organizer, a defender of Roma workers' rights. He led strikes and resistance and justice everywhere. On 1932, he held a conference in the city of Mesdra. Many Roma from different cities in Bulgaria came. And they decided to open the association, not just for Roma residents in Sofia, but a national association. Again, looking to the world, looking to establish connection with Romani people in other places. At this time, there were Roma publications in Bulgaria, in Romania, in different countries. Some were monthly, some were weekly very well written, very well elaborated, very powerful uh, magazines, very powerful messages, you know? In, in my life as an activist, when I arrived to activism, to, to my work as an educator, Holocaust researcher, when I arrived 15, 20 years ago, it, I had the impression that we were uncovering a past nobody knew about, that we were getting for the first time Holocaust survivor testimonies, bringing them, talking to them. But now you go to the British National Archive, the Archive of Endangered Documents, and you start to look, and then you have hundreds of publications, hundreds of publications of Romani organizations that are reporting World War II and the destiny of survivors and victims on life, on what has happened on a weekly basis talking about the destiny of Romani people in Germany, in other countries. Can anybody explain me why nobody told me this? Why nobody told us this? Why every time young people arrive to the Romani movement, we don't have recollection of this? It's a very strange thing. It is a very strange thing when you have a movement with such a little memory. Sorry, the one before. Okay. No, no, sorry, the one before. Before? Yes, thank you. Um, now, the proto-fascist closed down the organization in the newspaper, still in the 30s, okay? But he did, he did not give up. Next picture, please. Okay. Now, look at this picture of Romani people. If you go to archives and you start to check pictures of Romani people in the 1930s, this is so different of the image that from institutions and authorities is given to us about who we are ourselves. This is an image of powerful, dignified people. And this is who we are, and this is who our grandparents were. This is who we have been for 10 centuries, powerful, dignified people. How we have gone from a <laughs> powerful, dignified people with a specific political approach, with a strong feeling of being a nation among nations, to be negotiating with European organizations and authorities about marginalization. How we have gone from the images you see today in the news to this, to this reality, How, what is the connection? How is that possible? I'm not gonna give you any answer, but I leave you this for you to reflect of the impressive work these people did and how incredible they were and why nobody remembered them. Shakir Pasov did not give up. He kept resisting. He fought against sexism in the Bulgarian and Roma society. He created support fund for Roma funerals. He created a Roma club established in a pub in honor to a famous Roma singer. He created a delegation to meet the newborn crown prince Simeon at the King Palace. 
He organized a performance of the Arabian Nights and invited Tsar Boris III, who did not attempt but sent an envelope with money, and he joined the resistance during World War II. And the list of things a single person did is so incredible. Can you imagine a time without phones, without computers? A, ti a time where many Roma were, as today, deprived. And they were so incredibly powerful. They have an outlook and a vision for the future that to a degree in my generation, and maybe the previous generation, we have lost. You know, we imagine 1971 as the beginning of a Roma movement. If anything, 1971 is a step in the Roma movement. Again, in the 40s, when the communist entered Bulgaria, he established another organization. This organization was called Equipe. They were fighting for voting rights, 1901, 1902. Roma, as many other people, were not allowed to vote. Eventually, they recovered the voting rights. Yeah, they were going to recover the voting rights anywhere because the law changed, but still, there was this effort to organize politically, to vote, to build power. This is one of the efforts of creating one of the earlier Romani alphabets. You know, there were workshops happening, there were seminars happening, there was people traveling. This generation of activists, by the way, participated in community life and tradition much more than any generation of Roma activists after. While from the 70s to now, in the 90s and the 80s, you see a separation between the Romani grassroots and Romani activism. You don't see this in the early Romani activists. You see communities mobilizing and people in connection with the community. You see the people organizing the alphabet, but you see them attending Romani weddings and dancing and participating in the life of their communities. We, we see less and less and less. What a strange thing. These are fragments of the constitution, from the foundational constitution of the Equipe Association, okay? Uh, I'm gonna read just parts to you because I find it very, very powerful and interesting. Uh, so we want to incorporate all Roma belonging to the worldwide Roma organization. Remember, these are the 40s now. And the, right, the United Roma Organization in Bulgaria is legitimate representative of the Roma movement in the country and before the worldwide Roma organization. All members are over 18 years old of age, wherever Islamic or Christian, without discrimination on the basis of gender or social status. This is the 40s. It's not just incredibly advanced and sophisticated, but it's calling for the unification of Muslim and Orthodox and Christian Roma to work together as a nation. The symbol, there was a beginning, it's not casual. This was the, in the stamp of the first Romani association that were registered. It's a symbol of St. George that has been celebrated as a festivity among Christian and Muslim Roma for centuries. You know, for Muslim Roma, Eder Lessi, for, for Christian Orthodox Roma, St. George. A powerful symbol, a powerful connection, an effort to bring Roma together, like we have not seen since then. Talking about the goals, they commit to struggle against fascism and anti gypsyism and racist prejudice to raise Roma national sentiment and consciousness among Roma, to introduce the Roma language to the Roma masses as a spoken and written language, to acquaint the Roma minority with Roma spiritual, social, and economic culture. Spiritual culture, what a, what a sentence. To illuminate non-Roma public opinion about the needs of the Roma population, and to create a sense of striving among Roma towards developing a national home on their own land. Now. If anything happened in the last 50 years, is that we have been dropping point per point what were our demands till our demands have met the minimum. Think about this for a second. Our petitions and demands now are like this. And at the beginning of the century, our ambition knew no limit because we believe in ourselves in a way that we struggle today to believe. Next one, please. Yeah, they declared that 7th of May will be the day of the Roma nation in the fashion that today we celebrate 8th of April. Next one. And they designed this flag. The flag again is a reconstruction, was never designed, was never built. I reconstructed based on the description of the earlier Romani flag. 
this is powerful. This is powerful because it's so in us and it's so in our people, and this is especially important for young people today, that we are not alone in our effort and in our struggle, but that there is 10 centuries of heritage, of fight, of a struggle, that we are we're walking on the steps of our ancestors, which unfortunately we don't even know sometimes because for some reason, this is not interesting for people. I just, I don't understand it. As I was reading and reading documents and documents and documents, I was crying. I was crying and the, and the hair in my arm, they were, you know, they were rise up because I was thinking, what incredible people and what an incredible generation. And they're not remembered. And maybe in 100 years, who's going to remember this Congress? Somebody looking in some archive will see a picture of some of you and will say, who was this guy? He traveled the whole world trying to talk about Roma? That's, so, so when I was watching this picture of Shakir Pasov and people that is so much better than me and than so many activists I know, and I look and I said, wow, I am humbled by the sacrifice and the spirit and the power of these people. He, by the way, struggled all his life and he was put not one, but possibly two or three times in a communist concentration camp for making Roma the priority in his work. What a powerful man. What an incredible life. Who lived in a time of turbulence. First World War, he fought. Second World War, then the communist rule in Bulgaria. Then you see the man with his family, with his child, playing with a toy. You see a human portrait of this extraordinary man. And then you see him as an elderly man with his family, with his grandchildren. Sakir Pasov died in 1981, probably as a totally anonymous man. And I ask myself, why? Why we don't have memory of this? And I do believe that if we want this movement to succeed in the next 100 years, this is, you know, he started his activities almost 100 years ago, if we want to, to have any perspective in 100 years, we need to go and we need to understand our history much beyond 1971. 1971 is the tip of the iceberg. We need to make the question who we are as a people and what is our power and our capacity and our dignity. And may in people like Shakir Pasov and what they did, we can find an enormous inspiration. Thank you very much and thank you for listening. Have a great day. Thank you very much, Mr. Fernandez, for your valuable presentation about the Roma Resistance Day and the unknown history of the Roma movement.